Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and VR News for July 13th. So just a couple of a uh, couple of little updates and uh, and comments before I get into the news. The first of which is the audio. <laughs> if you are hearing this, well, that's a good thing, but it means that my wife has given her thumbs up to the audio being good on headphones, and I've hit the publish button. The past few weeks, I've been experimenting with the mic, and contrary to opinion. I do, in fact, have a mic. I don't record through a potato. This is the mic. <laughs> but I had been experimenting with it. I was picking up a lot of uh, humming and sounds from the desk, so I moved it. Now I've got a sound suspension, which hopefully means it's not absorbing as much if I do accidentally bump into something. And it's not so far away. But... Throughout the course of all that tinkering, I must have set the mic volume down because it was at 50%. Uh, obviously, that's been fixed. It's the kind of thing I would probably fire myself for. But with all the freaking troubleshooting I've been doing the last three weeks with Rift, Vive, and work, I'm going to cut myself some slack and just apologize for any of you who had to crank up your volume. That'll be a thing of the past. I think you'll agree this sounds better. If it doesn't, let me know. The next thing I want to talk about is 4X gaming. <laughs> um, yes, I know it's not four times. And, and some really passionate people pointed that out. And, and props to you. It's one of my favorite genres. It was a tongue-in-cheek mispronunciation aimed at my buddies. We are pre-internet guys. And we've been mispronouncing is just a favorite fun little thing that we do you got to remember back then you couldn't just google something and get a sound clip for how something's pronounced so we would butcher pronunciations and they would become standard in our lingo Dungeons and Dragons was a perfect example of that and it was uh, Behemoth I think is his name uh, anyways doesn't not important who he is but we would say Bahamut instead of Behemoth right and I'm not even sure if Bayameth is right. But anyways, so who, those of you who picked that up, yeah, you guys are obviously as passionate as I am about 4X, but since Civilization, Master of Orion 2, those are probably my top two 4X games. Um, I pretty much play all of them. Endless Legends is my current favorite. Uh, there's a space one and a fantasy, not to do with VR, but if that's your bag, Check them out. They're awesome. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is just back to the compatibility with the Rift, just to put the nail in the coffin on that for now. Oculus doesn't have an official compatibility list. So if you're having USB issues with your Rift or display port issues, I've got the solution because I purchased them. The first for USB is this Inatec card. Okay. It's a four port USB 3 PCI Express card. Powered with a SATA power adapter. 100% it works. Because they don't have that convenient list, right? If you're having a display port issue or you're not able to plug into the HDMI directly, which, thank you, NVIDIA, they have stepped forward and taken responsibility for a lot of that, uh, which they will fix in the next driver. But this, Cable Matters, display port to HDMI adapter with 4K, works 100%. If you have one of those people who has display port issues, this is this and the USB are the only ones that Oculus is specifying. Oh, there's one more chipset for USB cards, but it escapes me right now. But those two I've personally tested and I can assure you work. On to the news, guys. So there's a company uh Jason Riggs is the CEO of and he did a Kickstarter and it's to do with basically advanced audio, 3D audio. And it's called OSIC and 3D audio using advanced algorithms is kind of their little claim to fame. Now, usually I don't put a lot of weight on Kickstarter stuff. I kick, you know, back to Kickstarter projects. But you've always got to be tricky because they raised 2.7 million. You don't have to be tricky. You have to be careful because it can be tricky. They raised 2.7 million. But I tend to look at the number of backers and it was just over 10,000. So not a huge number putting importance on audio. But think about it. Even us here on this channel, what's most of our discussion center around? 
visual. And that's normal, and that's human nature, unless you have lost the ability of sight, you tend to react to the visual stimulus first. Audio is usually an afterthought, right? And it's funny because we do that as humans. We'll buy a thousand dollar video card and what will we do with the, with the games that are powered by that thousand dollar video card? We'll play them on a 15 inch CRT monitor, right? Those things become afterthoughts, but they're just as important. And I think audio is in that same ballpark, right? You take like the, the Rift headphones, for example, they're built in. They're not high end, far from it. They're not bad, but they're not high end. So what these guys are doing is looking at advanced algorithms that are going to deliver what they call a unique and personalized experience because they're trying to mimic how sound can come at you from multiple directions. Now, it was probably about 15 years ago I bought a 5.1 headset and it literally had five speakers in the headphones and it was more gimmick than practical. It wasn't that great. This one truly has promise. And you think about it, when I talk about that killer app that hasn't been released yet, imagine that, it's massively immersive. The control set is awesome, but sound effects, it's blips and bleeps, right? While it's probably the least most important factor for a lot of devs, it's an important one. And if you can deliver awesome audio the technology to play that awesome audio, I think will follow, right? It's just, it doesn't get as high of a priority. So putting that in the description below, you can check it out yourself. It's Osic X headphones and uh, Jason Riggs is the CEO, as I mentioned. So there will be a link below. The next thing I wanna talk about is Dirt Rally because we talked about Dirt Rally with regards to it being available for the Rift. Well, now it's available on Revive. And Revive is something I'm going to revisit. Don't think just because I have the Rift, I'm not going to go back to that. No. In fact, I want to get back to that more than ever because now I can actually compare. I can look at a native Rift game, right? And then I can compare it on Revive and let you guys know the differences, right? And where I'm really curious, guys, is the differences in some of the pros and cons that I mentioned that are, you know, structural, uh, structural differences, uh, not just aesthetic ones, but functional differences. And being able to see what they are, I think is going to be pretty interesting. So anyways, that's released for Revive or available on Revive. Hasn't been released to anything but paying customers. The next article has to do with a organization called VR Society. And this is an Upload VR article. These guys are a body created to, of Hollywood types, right? Uh, and Silicon Valley to ensure that there's a high quality standard for virtual reality. And these guys are a spin-off of the Advanced Imaging Society, which has Disney, WB, DreamWorks, right? How much are they gonna be able to accomplish? And, and you know, we kind of understand their mandate, but really, how effective are they gonna be? Are they going to be able to truly maintain high quality? I don't think so. I think watchdogs are important, but I think ultimately it's going to be us as consumers voting with our wallets. If there's a shitty game out there, word's going to get around that it's a shitty game. And either it's going to be so incredibly crappy that like, uh, what is that game? Euro Truck, I think, which was on Cinema Massacre where you can drive backwards at light speed. When it crosses the boundary of bad to that degree, oh, okay, you could probably make an argument for buying it just for pure entertainment value. But for the most part, if it's bad, horrible, with no redeeming qualities, word is going to get out, it will not sell well, with few, few exceptions. So how much is a body like that going to be? I think they're going to try to do things to justify their existence, but can't think of too many. If you guys can, let me know how they could go about that, monitoring and enforcing standards, which could very well be subjective, right? The next news item has to do with NVIDIA, the 1060. So performance benchmarks have been leaked and I'm gonna link the article below, but what it does is it compares the 1060 to the 480, the RX 480 from AMD and GTX's own 980. 
I calculated all the benchmarks and I just did a, a quick average. So if you're into statistics, yeah, it's probably not exact and I wouldn't put poll statistics on it. But I can comfortably say that 15% performance gap between the RX 480 and the NVIDIA 1060 with the NVIDIA 1060 being the faster card on average by 15%. And that 15% average ranges from games where there's 5% difference only to 40, 50%. And it kind of keeps pace with the 980. So how do I view that card? I kind of look at it as almost a, an entry-level solution because let's face it, Game Makers Forever, and it's a marketing thing, and I mentioned that in discussions with some of you, that they'll put the minimum required specifications and the recommended. And I usually push people to the recommended as the minimum because they want to sell games, right? That's the business that they're in. So maybe 11 frames per second is playable to them because it helps them meet a fiscal quarter, right? A fiscal quarter's target. But to you or me, that would absolutely not be acceptable. So... That's kind of how I would tend to view that, and that's how I look at the 1060 and the 480 as good entry-level cards that will give you an ability to enjoy the majority of VR content, right? And then there's the truly kind of the high end and, and the mid beyond that. The last thing we're going to talk about is the Oculus Touch Dev Kit, which has been sent out to about 5,000 devs. Now, I'm a little skeptical because there was a tweet that went out from Brendan, CEO of Oculus, and in his tweet, he indicated that thousands were sent out to devs. So somebody called him on it, and their exact quote or their exact tweet was, um, thousands? Are you certain it's not hundreds? This sounds very unrealistic considering you mentioned developers. To which Brendan replied, well, over 5,000 will be sent to devs before the consumer version ships, which to me begs the question, you know, is this every Tom, Dick, and Harry that has Sid Meier aspirations? Are we truly talking about devs that are going to deliver a finished pro project? Because 5,000 seems awfully high, right? Uh, I would go with the former argument that it's to cater to anybody who has illusions of grandeur and wants to be the next, you know, big game programmer. Obviously, there's people who pull it off, but for every person or team that pulls it off, there's a hundred that fall to the wayside because of scope creep, uh, over ambitious. But the main reason, they don't finish what they start. They will start a project, cancel, move on to something else, cancel. And by the time they truly probably would be ready, the industry's passed them by. So take that with a grain of salt but at least it's getting out there. So if a quality dev is one of the devs that intercepts the Oculus Touch, we're gonna to be in for some probably cool stuff. And like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I can't wait to compare it to the Vive Stick because I can definitely see advantages to the Touch. I like the fact that you can free up your fingers when you're holding the Touch as an example, but I also know what I love about the Vive Stick. So stay tuned for that as well once the touch is actually released to the rest of us. All right, guys, that's it for news. Uh, gaming video will probably be up next. As always, cheers.